Hello guys and welcome to part one of the T3476 uh, build. Uh, I'm Vincent from Mr. Lots Model Making and uh, I'll be the one guiding you through this build. So, uh, quick reminder. This is what we're uh, going to be building. We're going to keep it simple, not a lot of aftermarket, just simple aluminium barrel because didn't cost that much and metal tracks just to get that sag looking nice and uh, tidy but um, let's cut to the bench I do have to apologize had slight issues with the frame rate when transferring the files from my camera ie my cell phone into my computer so um, but it's viewable which is why I decided to go through with it otherwise I would have to do a new build for videoing um, I know the plan was to do the zero, but I kind of figured, you know, why why not go back to uh, my roots and get working on some uh, pan um, panzers, I suppose it is panzers, uh, working on some armor. But uh, without further ado, let's switch to the ben bench cam and get started. See you guys at the bench. Two manuals, one in Japanese, one in English just uh, shows you the age and yes that is uh, quite yellowed you might not notice on the box as you can see it's an, an actual made in Japan uh, Tamiya kit so you know that tells the age I think it's a 1986 um, molding and this is in an original boxing like a first you know run box uh, a little um, shaft for the um, front wheels because this is originally a battery driven kit so you need to tension the tracks plastic track vinyl tracks getting rid of those not using those using nice fuel metal ones uh, and here we can see the uh, kits heritage as a uh, RC kit because that's what to me it did back in the day even with the 135th scale kits so um, the hull you know nice fit there is a opening if you look under the fenders but i'm not going to address that because it's not really going to be showing anyway once we put it on a little vignette type um, base but um yeah a lot of this is uh you know you, you pick it up you flip it around and you see like this is this is meant to be rc so uh decal sheet the russian slogans some numberings for the tank There we go. Second decal sheet slightly yes yellowed. There we go, yeah. So that's that. And then um turret and wheels in that bag. It does look nice and crisp. There is a uh, casting detail on them on the turret as you can see. And, and there are uh, nice well details as well so uh, you know for something that is 30 years old very much uh, my respect for that so this is the back part and what goes on top of the hull and the steel wheels uh, that you can use as an alternative we'll get to that later so I'll put that back and then there's a lot of dressings you can put on the side as you want uh, a couple of extra bits in this kit so yeah, that's pretty nice so let's put that back into the box and uh, quickly peruse the manual. So the manual is simple. So this is the f several finishing options we saw there briefly. If I didn't flip to, yeah. And uh, uh, as you can see, deceptively simple uh, manual: rubber tired wheels and steel tired wheels. So. Um, you get a bit of an alternative because they were running out of rubber during the, you know later on in the war but uh, i decided this um to do this as quite an early production version so i'll only be having the commander in it as well because there's no interior detail and as you can see from the picture here the driver's basically sitting back into th in the tank and with the hatch open not sitting out of the hatch as in most tanks um, so the, the lack of interior detail would be quite visible so I, I you know not doing that so let's get these sprues out a 
put the one for the tether to the side because we're gonna start with the wheels on this one because uh, obviously this is um, one of the more repetitive tasks so you might as well get that out of the way and get them on stick and get them assembled get them on sticks um, unlike mm, the current Samia kits that were coming out like uh, I've, I've got some later 90s era boxings those um, those tend to c not come with poly caps for all the wheels just the sprocket wheel to make it easier to put tracks on be it the vinyl ones that come with the kit or metal ones later on um, but um, yeah these are all poly capped wheels so uh, let's continue with that right pick that up <coughs> right, the wheels. So I'm just gonna quickly, you know, show you how to denub these. Take them off the sprue, leaving a lot of the nub on there, like so. Might as well get the two halves because we're doing one wheel of each type to show you I don't want to get into repetitive building all the wheels because th there's no point so there is a casting line on them on the on the rubber tire part of it which we will need to get rid of but first take off the majority of the nub with your modeling knife always use a fresh knife use a sharp knife when starting a new kit and I do apologize for not thinking here because yeah I should have taken rid of it taking the plastic away but what I'm doing is quite visible so sorry for the slight glare um, but you can see what I'm doing here I'm just taking the top of the nub off uh, if you leave a lot of nub you might want to shave little bits of it off or you would probably end up with the same result as nipping it uh, straight at the at the part if you do have something like God Hands or um, that new brand which is quite similar to God Hand you might find that you can actually cut straight to the part without um, you know uh, damaging the part in any way because they are just that sharp for those who don't use the method I just explained so now time to get my sanding sticks out so I'll get be getting a soft one out and a slightly rougher one the soft ones on the side there using UMP ones but uh, I'm, I'm not really uh, married to a brand so to speak and then the slightly rougher one we start working on the seam line as you can see and uh, at certain spo points I will be uh, working a bit longer on the same spot like here because that's the area where we've got away the nub so we want to blend that in with the rest because you'll invariably on a round part like that you will end up with an ever so slightly round spot if uh, if the sprue connection is, is, is quite big so you've got a big nub um, but yeah, let's fast forward this because you know we don't want to see this do we now um, in that great detail. But you can see how nicely the part cleans up. It is quite hard plastic on the solder kit, so you might see me working on uh, on it a bit longer than you would expect. But keep working the wheel round, like let it, let it go round in your hands, so working it round because you don't end up with flat, you know, uh, sanding flat spots in them. And you can see me twist the wheel around every now and again so we work it nice and even so it keeps its round shape and not go doesn't go ovoid or something like that anyway fast forward this you can see a general idea of what we're doing so there we go that's the part how it should look now I did uh, have to uh, get a uh, sturdy brush out to get the, all the dust out of these um, and give them a slight wash to paint them but that comes later when we're painting these so let's gloss over that for now oh more sanding yeah you see me 
rub my fingernail across it that is kind of the way to check it uh, I guess As you can see we're ending up with a nice round wheel and that has no distinction of a cast line now let's put these together because the focus of this is the lower hull but there is very little to build on the actual lower hull in these because like suspension is molded on and stuff so that's why most of this is going to be two wheels sadly enough this is why it's a short video as well next one might be a bit longer 30 to 40 minutes depending on how I can edit it because that's upper hull and we're add adding a lot of uh, stuff but anyway you can see they sort of slide together and click together and then uh, along that edge you just drop a bit of glue in I'm using the uh, MIG uh, thin cement in this case but if you used to me it works the same Mr. Hobby you know what works the same um, so let that put that to the side for now and then uh, this is the steel uh, alternative version has a little uh, notch that is cut out so you can align it correctly like so and then again you get a little edge right there where you put in a bit of glue capillary reaction takes it round and round and that will be fine and then do it from the inside as well there we go that'll work you might see me shaking the bottle there is to load up the brush with a decent amount of glue because it is getting uh, rather low and there we go we've already got quite a solid part check if everything is neatly aligned you don't want any wonky wheels um, once they're set these ones they slide together as well in a similar fashion as the, the bigger ones these are the idler wheels that go up front so just a bit of glue in between there and that's all I did for them because they are quite small and that one dot drop of glue will go nicely round and now these are the rear drive sprockets two notches and they have these little pegs which are meant to uh, resemble the rollers because this is a track rather than with teeth on the sprockets it works with rollers on the inside latching in with the uh, sprockets on the track so you need to glue those as well so first get a drop of glue in there and then just load up the brush and rub it along every one of those little pegs so they nicely set with it as well because we do want a strong connection we are using metal tracks later on so we do want to keep that in mind oh dear so that's our uh, four types of wheels um, as you can see I've already got the other ones uh, ready assembled now we're going to look into the lower hull what is there to assemble on there and I must be honest it's not a lot so uh, front axle bolt goes in there now this is uh, there are little teeth on the latch that holds in the front axle because um, like I said earlier it is going to allow for setting track tension in our case this might be quite helpful because we are using metal tracks after all do be mindful once it's assembled that you do not uh, unscrew it completely just loosen it so you can move the axle around because otherwise you will have um, uh, undone it completely and no way to get to it if you glue it together now there is a way to put this together without gluing upper and lower hull together because it again it used to be um, viable for RC as well without uh, any major modifications uh, but we'll get to that later so it does leave you a choice for me it does mean that before assembly I will be able to uh, judge the metal tracks length and then actually be able to set a bit of tension um, that way uh, there we go need to make sure we center it And get our screwdriver and there we go that's the screwdriver 
just closed. Now I must uh, apologize for the frame rate on this one. Something did go wonky with the camera. But um, it, it's watchable, you know what I'm doing. So I figured might as well put it out there and make sure part two is bad. So uh, there we go, front axle in. Because it had slipped out as I was tightening it. Now we can center it properly. Final tightening. Don't over tighten it, of course. But um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Is all there is to it. Um, and um, I might actually later on, as I start assembling these, decide to lessen it because it's at maximum tension now. It's all the way forward. I might actually take it back a bit so I can adjust later on. Um, I'm gonna have to think about that. But there we go, that's our uh, lower hull assembled. Now these two, uh, quite simply, uh, you've got that front lip which uh, houses the gearbox and differentials behind it. Um, so send the knobs away if there are any left, uh, as in this case. Rather large nub there that I uh, missed. <coughs> so we are going to take care of that. You might see that the uh, rough grit uh, sanding stick is lying there on the side. That's because when I did all, all the other wheels off camera, I did find it was a bit easier uh, to go with a rather rough grid to get that first, uh, that cast line out of it, that, that seam line uh, on the rubber. So that lip, fairly easy to attach. Um, and there are locating pins on the side which latch in there so there you go that's that's really all there is to it line up those there you go you might notice that it, it is there are going to be gaps we need to be dealing with at cer uh, certain points but uh, for the most part glue will take care of it again there are some tolerances because former RC model I'm, I know I'm repeating myself here but it is something to take into account um, I did not uh, close up the holes because again I will not be uh, showing off any of the other underside anyway once it's on the base so you know I didn't really see the point in this one I want to make it a simple quick build I could video for your guys enjoyment I just drop that uh, I took out the Mr. Cement S because it's a bit stronger um, than Tamiya thin or MIG thin and um, yeah, you can see I just dropped it into the seams uh, it, and the capillary reaction will take care of it just press it closed a bit again you might see little peaks of light coming through on that part but I will be dealing with that at a certain point now that little nub annoyed me I don't know why because I will not be showing off the bottom repeating myself here but it's one of those things in it so next part that would be uh, putting in the tow hooks oh yes those parts so they um, my camera kind of quit on me here but they click in as you can see uh, the little nubs click in and then yeah there we go that part clicks in into the opening see it clearly here and then after that that's clicked in you just dollop a glue in there and uh, you're done so now we should be going on to the toe hooks there we go toe hooks so these are quite annoying so I do apologize if a lot the if you do miss a bit because you kind of have to pinch them between your fingers and put them in the little notches. It is very fine work. Mm -hmm. The left little nub on there, you don't really have to clean it up so good 100% because there is only the one nub on the bottom. 
to worry about. And again, this was a very tight area to work because you have those. Um, I'm, I'm guessing they're brake drums. Uh, yeah, they would be brake drums, wouldn't be? When they, um, you have those brake drums sitting there quite annoyingly in the way. Um, so what I ended up doing is dollop of glue in there, so I would get some tackiness because this makes the plastic quite tacky, being so uh, strong. Mr. Cement S. And again, struggling because these are rather annoying little bits. There you go, got one in. And then what I just did is get some glue from the inside that can work its way through, and then you, if you squeeze it ever so gently, you get a nice little um, almost weld like effect on it. So again, same method here, tack up the plastic a bit, and they will get away from you, so I, I, that's why I didn't handle them with tweezers to be fair, it might have been easier, it might not have been. I just didn't want them to ping off into uh, oblivion. So again, glue on the inside, and there we go, that's it. That's uh, pretty much, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is a load hull done. So I hope you you guys enjoyed that. And uh, I shall catch you guys in uh, part two. Bye-bye, and thanks for watching.